welcome to the first episode, part 1 of Microbiome and Bioresource Research Strength MBRS Talk Series. This MBRS Talk Series is established to share the recent findings related to microbiome research. Some parts of this talk series will be derived from our MBRS Monthly Journal Club presentation held at Monash University, Malaysia. I am Dr. Jody Lawan Fei from the Novel Bacteria and Drug Discovery Research Group under the Microbiome and Bioresource Research Strain. In this video, we will explore the association of the gut microbiome and one of the most common mental disorders, which is depression. Before that, this is just a brief introduction about myself. I am one of the core members of the MBRS research team. To that, I have achieved a total of 31 journal articles publication along with other publications such as conference abstracts and a book chapter due to the tremendous support given by the research team. In this continually evolving, fast-paced society, the burden of mental disorders continues to grow and they are among the leading causes of disability worldwide. Depression is a severe mood disorder that causes people to experience low mood or sadness, loss of interest, feelings of guilt, loss of wealth, disturbed sleep or appetite, tiredness, and poor concentration. Depression can substantially impair an individual's ability to function at work or school and to cope with daily life. We have known that there are various antidepressants available to treat this illness. Despite that, there are about 30 to 40% of patients who do not respond to current drug strategies. And some of these antidepressants still carry limitations and severe side effects. Therefore, it will be significant to explore alternative approaches for depression treatment and to promote mental well-being. Recently, researchers have been exploring the association of the gut microbiome with depression. Now, I will share with you a Zoom recording of the MBRS Journal Club presentation. The gut brain axis has emerged as one of the new pathways explored to understand the pathophysiology of mental disorders. Gut brain axis is used to define the relationship between the microbiota in the gastrointestinal tract and their interaction with the brain. It is a bidirectional communication system between the GI tract and the central nervous system. So in an article published by Martin and colleagues in 2000, 18 had proposed the system biological model of brain gut microbiome interaction. Basically, in this model, the gut microbiota communicates with the gut connectome, which is a network of interacting cell types in the gut, via the microbial metabolites. While changes in the gut function can also affect the behavior of the gut bacteria. Gut microbiota can communicate with the brain indirectly via the gut derived molecules acting on three main pathways involving the enteric nervous system through the vagus nerve and the immune system as well as the neuroendocrine system involving the hypothalamus pituitary axis. Additionally, the gut microbiota can communicate with the brain directly via microbe generated neuroactive signals. This affects the brain in terms of, of stress, reactivity, mood, sleep, and so on. The brain could then regulate the autonomic nervous system influences, which indirectly alter the gut microbial composition and function by modulating the microbial environment in the gut. A number of studies have been conducted to investigate the relationship between gut microbiome and depression. I'll share with you some examples of these studies in the following slides. A clinical trial was conducted by Jiang in 2015 to investigate the correlation of gut microbiome and depression. This study reveals that the gut microbiome composition was different between depressed patients and healthy individuals. The study also highlighted that in active major depressive disorder group, the, the AMDD group and the healthy control, exhibited statistically different, uh, significant differences with regard to these three dominant phyla, which is the proteobacteria, formicutes, and bacteroides. The relative proportion of these bacteria over here also show significantly higher in the active measure depressive group as compared to the healthy control. 
Furthermore, one of the most recent studies, which was published this year in 2020, also reveals that there, are, there were age-specific differential changes on the gut microbiome composition in patients with major depressive disorder. This study was conducted by a group of researchers in China where they recruited subjects of healthy control and major, major depressive disorder patients and categorized them into two age groups, which was the young group between age of 18 to 29 years and the middle age group between the age of 30 to 59 years. 16S metagenomic sequencing was conducted to analyze their stool samples. The results demonstrated that in the young patient, in the young MD, uh, in the young group subjects, the relative abundances of the bacteriodes, which is in blue, is higher in the young MDD patients than the healthy control. While the firmicutes, which in the, is in red here, is lower in MDD patients as compared to the healthy control. Whereas for the middle age group subjects, the relative abundances of bacteriodes, which is in blue here, was lower as compared to its healthy control, while the actinobacteria group, which is the purple one here, was higher as compared to its healthy controls. And from this four figure, we also can observe that the relative abundances of the gut bacteria were different between the young, young group and the middle-aged groups. On the other hand, research also provided evidence that changes in gut microbiome could contribute to depression. For instance, in this study, an adult, uh, the adult germ-free mice were colonized with poor fecal samples randomly derived from healthy control and the non-medicated major depressive disorder patients through the process known as fecal microbiota transplantation. And this is to induce the healthy microbiota and the depression microbiota recipient mice respectively. Comparative assessment of depression-like behavior in the both of the uh, depression microbiota and healthy microbiota recipients mice was performed using the well-established behavioral test, which is the swimming, force swimming test and tail suspension test on week two of post-FMT. The depression microbiota recipient displayed an increased duration of immobility in both tests compared to the healthy microbiota recipient. So therefore, uh, this finding shows that germ-free mice colonized by depression microbiota resulted in increased depression-like behaviors as compared to those colonized by the healthy microbiota. As summary, these findings indicate that the gut microbiome is associated with the development of depression. I will further discuss the prevention and treatment of depression via gut microbiome intervention in the next video. Please stay tuned for part 2 of MBRS Talk. A very special thanks to Jeffrey Chia School of Medicine and Health Sciences, Monash University, Malaysia, and the MBRS NBDT research team. Thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.